Hello, welcome to a devlog. I'm I'm doing a game jam at the moment and I want to try and document it as best I can. So I'm hoping to make frequent devlogs. Um, so this is unrelated to anything else I've, um, I've talked about before on these. Um, the jam that I'm participating in is called the Transferable Class Skills Jam and uh, I just saw it pop up on Twitter and thought it seemed like a cool idea was itching to do a jam and so figured I would. Um, this is the, the page over on itch. I'll leave a link uh, uh, downstairs, obviously. Um, so yeah, the, the concept is like uh, Dungeons and Dragons style role-playing game adventurers. Um, how would they use their skills that they have for slaying uh, skeletons and stuff uh, if they hang up their spurs and stop adventuring. Uh, I think that's pretty much the concept. Um, so that piqued my interest and um, I wanted to do something pretty much exactly about that, uh, sort of a generic fantasy setting. Um, you play an adventurer who has given up adventuring and um, what do they find to do with um, with what they know. Uh, so I've been working on it one day, just today, and I'll show what it's like. So, this is the, the current build. This is just a test screen to allow me to navigate around a bit uh, for debugging purposes. Um, so, uh, you are going to create a character at the beginning of the game. At the moment I have three classes, and I'd like to do more, but I don't think that time will permit it, so I think I think three is what we're going to get. At the moment, only the fighter works. Um, I'm going to include races that you can choose, um, and also probably like backgrounds where you grew up, um, but those are not implemented yet. Again, like you choose some skills, you choose some abilities. I haven't yet written that stuff. But I've got this levelling up system where you get uh, stats and skills and things every time you level up. And uh, at the end of the process you, you confirm it, you choose a name, I have a random name generator because I like writing those. Um, typo here, you're going to see typos, it's day one, I have not, um, I have not proofread any of this stuff. Um, so let's go for Glodleak, I like that, it's a good name. Um, so yeah, that's step one is this character creator, which I've, I've made the bones of, um, still got to implement the skill system and the ability system and maybe a background system too, and races and the other character, uh, the other classes. So most of it. Then there's going to be a section where you sort of live out in fast forward your career adventuring. Um, you get to choose a place to go and you will get a description which is more than what you can see there of what you do. Um, and then you get to level up and you can, like here, you can pick an ability. This was just a test I did at the beginning, so these are not real abilities or anything. But um, yeah, so you go on an adventure, you get to choose where you go, you get a description of what happens and you level up and um, then it happens again. Again, the system isn't like fully made yet, it's day one, so um, take it back to the beginning. The, that's the introduction to the game and then you will, something will happen on your adventures which causes you to uh, want to give up and do something else and you move to the city and almost instantly lose all your gold that you've gained adventuring and have to go find a job. Um, so I have sort of done the get a job system but there's only one job in there so far so I'm not going to bother to do that. Once you've picked a job you you start work. So um, the, the structure of it is such that, oh I have really terrible frame rate. Huh. I... Anyway, I'm not going to re-record this. I haven't got time. 
Um, I hope it's watchable. Um, so yeah, after the introduction section, the structure of the game is that you, you get a job. It's not necessarily easy to get a job. You, you have to do interviews and stuff and uh, you can get turned down. And um, once you get a job, you go there every day and stuff happens. Um, this is something I have to balance a bit because um, at the moment I've got it set that most days nothing happens and then sometimes something happens. Um, I think the balance is off and um, ideally more things will happen than won't. But it depends on the time I have also. Like um, It'll be half a question of balance and half a question of how much time, how much content can I write quickly. Um, right now it's in a debug mode where um, something happens every day because I'm testing that. Uh, so you go to work and um, you get some description of what's going on. Um, this is your boss. Uh, I don't know where the name came from. Uh, shrimp then. Um, you arrive bright and early and Herr Shrimp then starts to go over the minutiae of the job. This is your first day on the job, which is to assist him in his somewhat obscure sphragistic, sphragistic, I guess, duties. Um, this is uh, the study of seals and, uh, yeah, seals, as in not the animals, the like the way you close a letter. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, the morning passes without a single customer arriving to disturb your new master's monologue, which drones perpetually on, lulling you into a state of torpor. By the end of the day, you think you've got the gist of your responsibilities, which seem mostly to involve filing and fetching pickled eggs for lunch. Evening comes and you help Herr Schrumpven to close up. He wishes you well, and you do the same. This is like a kind of a standard... Um, nothing happens day, although it's it's the first day on the job. So the first day on any job, you're, there'll be a special like the introduction to the job. You go home and uh, go to bed and a new day happens, uh, which I realize is like super similar to other stuff that I've done. And I've been thinking about the way that I structure games and I really have a tendency to make very cyclical things where the actions repeat, you do a day and then day and day, and I don't know, I don't know why. I need to analyze this and work out um, why why I do that. Um, so anyway, yes, this is you go to work again, and here something happens, right? Um, you spend the whole morning listening to Hesh Trump, then expresses deep admiration for Tan Mal Ninth, Arch King of the Herefjord, and the many achievements of his thirty-year reign. Just before lunch, while you're sorting through a packing crate so riddled with woodworm that it atomizes at your touch, you come across an old parchment that's not a useful parchment, I don't think, still closed with an enormous and elaborate steel, a seal even. Um, and again, like this is debug now, so there are skill checks and things going on in the background. Um, in this case, um, you if I can decide with this a bit. It's not a complicated skill system. I'm actually repurposing it from a different game. Um, there is a dice roll on, at the moment, a 12-sided dice. So it produces a number between 1 or 0, 0 and 11, I think. Um, there, that is adjusted by a difficulty, which is added or subtracted to the roll. And that's compared against a combination of a stat that you have, a skill that you have, and then a luck stat that you have and if uh, this number is smaller than that number then you pass the check it's a really like not intuitive system if this was a pen and paper role-playing thing but it's not pen and paper so I think I think it's okay um, uh, and yeah I've, I've got this included in to help me while I'm testing it this will not appear in the thing um, so in this case you found this seal, and because you've passed this check, you have identified it as being from the royal family of Umtamal um Olun. You should probably show it to Herr Schrumpven, but maybe you could look at it first. Uh, I am going to reload because I have a cheat mode where you get all of the abilities and stuff, and you pretty much pass all the checks. Um, let's go through this again. So day one is the same. 
do too. It's going to be the same event because, 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 because. Um, so here is a, not a skill check, but um, this text here depends on abilities that you have. So you feel strongly it would be prudent to look at it first. There are a couple of abilities that you can get which allow you to sense danger or get premonitions and things, and that's another thing that'll like keep cropping up. The text will, you, there'll be skill checks going on in the background, which will give you more or less information. I'm a little bit uncertain about how much to do with this, because obviously if it's in the background and you don't know it's happening, then maybe these things make no difference to the player. Um, so most of what I'm going to do with this kind of thing is going to express in some way the skill checks are going to go on. Even if it's just um, modifying the strength of an adjective in a sentence in order to indicate how much you feel a thing or how strong an effect is. So as much as possible, I am going to try and communicate it, time allowing. Um, and so this is a typical day when something happens. You get some sort of event and you have to choose how to react to it. Um, in this case, it's telling us that we should look at it first. So let's look at it. You carefully pry the seal loose and unfold the document. It appears to be a highly authentic and original letter setting out an enormous and verifiable detail the many atrocious crimes of a certain Tan Air Ninth. If we go back, uh, Tan Air the Ninth is the guy that uh, he admires a lot. Um, so you're pretty certain the hair shrimp then won't be very happy at all to see this. If you wonder what to do, you hear a cough from his end of the room. What have you found? And this is the kind of the crux of the game, that you have ways of reacting to events depending on the skills that'll happen. At the moment, I'm opting to display the skills that are allowing you to do things. Uh, they're all at six because of the cheat that makes out all my skills. Um, there are always going to be some default options which you don't need a skill for, but generally are harder to succeed at or have less good consequences than the other ones. And we can do all of these things. For example, if we uh, if we try and burn it with our fireball skill, uh, under your breath you mutter the familiar words for conjuring a flaming ball of incineration. You have, in the heat of battle, flung many of these at evil necromancers or slavering bile beasts, but now you have to concentrate hard to reduce a hundredfold the usual force of the spell. This is our debug skill. Check again. Again, it's six plus six plus six, and this is against a uh, maximum of. Uh, 13 so there's there's no way you can fail when you're cheating uh, you touch your palm to the parchment and it vaporizes in a subtle puff of smoke success you look at hair shrimp then nothing he harumphs and goes back to work you spend the rest of the day sorting out more crates and um and that that's it that's actually literally all of the content that that i have uh i have set up because um, uh, because I spent a lot of time today working out what the skills are going to be, how to um, um, yeah, how to use the skills, how the leveling up system will work, and all the kind of stuff. There's a lot of like background mechanical maths and things going on which um, I guess I could maybe show. No, I don't have it available. Um, um, so yeah, that's kind of at the end-ish of day one. I'll probably do a little bit more. Uh, day two is gonna be uh, not very productive. I have other stuff to do. Um, so yeah, I'm pleased with my progress. I had hoped to do a little bit more than that. Um, I wanted to get one job sort of completely fleshed out and in the end I, I haven't. I've I've designed the whole system for getting jobs and doing interviews and things and I've written all of the content for that for this job. But in the end I've only done one like proper event and then a lot of um like ordinary days, days when not very much happens or insignificant things happen. 
Uh, I, I, I've written all of that for this event. So anyway, my objective is um, to get this working with three classes, to have a variety of skills and things that you can pick for each class so that uh, it would be possible to go back. I want at least three races, and it's probably going to be human, dwarf, elf, unless uh, I feel like it would be better to be more original. And then I don't know how many jobs there are going to be. The jobs is the main block of content, and um, we'll see. I've planned out a minimum of six jobs, and uh, I've got ideas for all of them, so they'll be in there. Um, it would be better to have more, um, but we'll see, we'll see. Uh, so anyway, that's, I'll, I'll wrap that up for now. I hope this video worked because I see that my frame rate is pretty terrible. Um, if it did work, thanks for watching and uh, I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.